Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation today. We're going to teach you everything about psoriasis under nine minutes. That's our goal. Make sure you repeatedly watch it, and that's the way we can stay in the memory. Um, again, my name is Premier Charath. I'm a program director, in internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I'm a director of research, and I teach medical students residents on a regular basis. I'm an assistant professor of medicine to large uh, U.S. medical school. Let's get into our topic. So, if you look at the uh, definition of psoriasis, you can say it's a chronic condition, right? Chronic inflammatory skin disorder causing skin cells to proliferate. So if you look at it, the normal skin kind of turnover is 24 days. What happened to the psoriasis? It come to like three to four days, you got the turnover, right? So the immature skin build up to bumpy red patches covered with white scales and mostly involve the scalp, knee, elbow, and back, okay? Epidemiology. 10 to 15 percent new cases begin in children younger than 10 years 2.2 percent of the world um, so 40 percent have family history also so it's very um, you know family also you need to be careful about that comorbidities obesity metabolic syndrome hypertension diabetes atherosclerosis disease and depression and anxiety so what triggers psoriasis we have say cold and dry weather stress obesity hormonal menopause causes flare you got medicine beta blocker ace inhibitor lithium anti-malaria like chloroquine, endomethacin, and steroid withdrawal, infection like strep throat and HIV infection, skin injury, tattoos, alcohol, smoking, and all, all of this, like even bug, bug bites can trigger a psoriasis. So if you look at the path genesis okay we already said some of the 40 percent could be like a, a familial also there's stress genetic autoimmune reactions and the medication cause T cell activation that's the first thing can happen epidermis infiltration secretion of cytokines like uh, is interferon IL IL1 IL2 and um, TNF tumor necrosis factor and then you got deregulator inflammatory process keratinocyte proliferation blood vessel dilatation and vascular enlargement is kind of leading into epidermal hyperplasia, improper cell maturation, fails to release adequate lipid, flaking, and silver scaling happen. The classic pathogenesis. So clinical features, if you look at it, you got silver colored scales, rashes, patches, you got inflamed skin covered with the loose silver colored scales, okay? And most cases, a black merge covering the large area is going to be itchy and the painful, small area of bleeding and discoloration. Pitting of the nails is like very common in these people. Scaly plaques can develop. 10 to 30 percent of the people can have also like a painful joint condition, kind of psoriatic arthritis. Okay. So um, based on the spread of psoriasis, you can divide them into mild to moderate and severe psoriasis. We got this nice picture taken from the National Psoriasis Foundation. 3% is the first one, 3 to 10% is the moderate, and more than 10% of the body has like a severe psoriasis, okay? So types of psoriasis, like there is plaque psoriasis. I mean, this is probably most common type. You got silver colored scales. Anybody can diagnose, usually on the joint. Um, these plaques will be um, itchy, painful, and you, sometimes you can bleed also, okay? And then you have the pustular psoriasis, like a pus filled, a tiny pustule. It's a nice picture over here. And then you get gutted, pan gutted psoriasis. Starts in the childhood or young adult would cause small red spot mainly on the torso and limbs. Triggers maybe a respiratory infection or stress injury and all of this could be. And even taking anti-malaria or beta blocker medication kind of stuff. Then there's like inverse psoriasis. Bright red shiny lesion that appear in the skin folds such as armpits and groin. And then you got erythrodermic psoriasis, large angry looking sheets of psoriasis. And then you got non-dermatological manifestation, you have to look at the nail, there's a pitting of the nail, it's very, very common. Sometimes they put as an examination question for like diagnosis of psoriasis. Then you got psoriatic arthritis, okay? Main classic find is there is swollen sausage shape. So if it's a sausage uh, shaped digit, think about psoriasis, stiff joints and back shoulder pain, nail pitting and all of this. UVI is also the other thing is kind of common. Oral psoriasis. Um, you got like um, severe chiliosis, extended surrounding skin, crossing the vermiliform border, and you got napkin psoriasis, presence of psoriasis in children's in the diaper region. So how do you diagnose it? And mainly the skin examination often enough to diagnose it. So like clinical diagnosis at the best side, looking at the patient. So two phenomena we have to know. One is Kovner phenomena and then Auspitz sign. What is Kovner's phenomena? Some kind of physical stimuli or skin injury, like you scratch it, then you, that can all of a sudden and the lesion can then develop. You can see the nice picture over here. And uh, then you got auspice sign. What is auspice sign? You got pinpoint uh, bleeding when the scales, you scrape it off, okay? 
So, and then you got the nice biopsy picture up here. What are the main classic biopsy? Acanthosis, paracaratosis, thickening of the stratum spinosum and thinning of the stratum granulosum. You got mundro microapsis and accumulation of neutrophils in the stratum cornea surrounded by paracaratosis. This is the main um, um, skin biopsy. You don't usually need the diagnosis for that. Lab tests, increased CR, ESR, and CRP are a factor is usually negative. Anti-CCP antibodies seen in 10 to 15 even though it's for like rheumatoid arthritis again psoriasis you can have 15 percent of the apple anti-ccp antibody so how do you treat it that's the most important thing right there's like you know we know it's mild moderate and severe based on each one is the treatment is different there's something called topical therapy so topical therapy you can start with the petroleum jelly and moisturize to prevent the moisture loss okay then you can also give steroid triamcinolone clobestol betamethasone make sure you see they take the low potency steroid that's very important then you have vitamin D derivatives like calciprot, calcitrol, tar preparation, anthralin, retinoids. Then you have calcineurin inhibitors. So it's all uh, tracrolimus, picrolimus, and pimacrolismus. And then you have also phototherapy. Then you have moderate cirrhosis, moderate psoriasis. You, you know, the, look at the definition. Three to ten percent of the body surface area involvement. You can try the uh, topical involvement. Then you can do the combination therapy in this group. Methotrexate, cyclosporin, epimelase, and then always the newest treatment is biological treatment you can see systemic retinoids and phototherapy now biological treatment if you have to think anything this is the latest treatment we will allow, I mean huge effect on the patient because you know um, this flaky lesions kind of very um, traumatic for the patient so you got like the biological treatment just look at what we have TNF alpha inhibitors ataroset adalimab infleximab then IL-7 pathway inhibitors like brodolumab and secukinumab and IL-23 pathway inhibitors you get ustic Kinab and Gusulcumab. Also, the like you know biological treatment. You have to know that, um, and um, so very very effective treatment for cirrhosis. I mean uh, psoriasis. And then they are systemic retinoids. What are they? Etrinitate, isotretinoin, acetretin, and arotenoid ethyl elastol. And look, let's look at the ultraviolet therapy is beneficial in the treating the dermatology condition because they got the anti-proliferative effect, right? It's um, it can slow the keratinization. And you got UVA phototherapy, you got UVB for, um, the phototherapy, you got PUVA like PUVA and eczema laser, those are the ultraviolet radiation. Um, you can use, um, and in severe psoriasis, greater than 10% of the body, you can use like topical plus systemic and plus phototherapy. So systemic, when you think about like, you know, think about the biological treatment, which you already uh, uh, discussed before. Um, thank you so much for watching. These are our references. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, please put it under comments. Please, uh, um, thank you for watching again. Thanks.